In the last session, we created a test module for our planned test case and touched on its ideal organization. Before writing any action lines for our test, we're going to create definitions for all user interface objects, that is, windows and controls, that our test will need to interact with, a process we call mapping the interface elements. Recall from the last session that our test case will need to interface with car rental's login window and its contents. Such direct interactions with an application are performed using system-level actions such as enter for text fields and click for buttons. Each such action line must identify its target control, which it does with these window and control arguments. Now, in any application, every UI object has a number of properties, each holding some value. And we identify each object using these property value pairs. Typically, the class of control plus one or two other properties is enough. And in our action lines, we could specify these property value pairs right in the window and control arguments. For instance, the login button resides on the window whose title property is car rental login. And within the window, we can uniquely identify the button as the control whose class is button and whose caption property has a value of login. But for a number of reasons, not the least of which is readability, this is generally not a good way to write your action lines. A much better one would be to somehow take these combinations of property value pairs and assign logical names to them, such as login for the window and perhaps login button for the button. We can then use these logical names, what we call TA names, as the argument values. This process of associating TA names with sets of property value pairs to identify UI objects is what we call interface mapping. In practice, we create a mapping for a control with a special action called an interface element. And all the interface elements for a given window reside in a file representing that window. That file is known as an interface entity. Now, it just so happens that this particular interface entity is just the one we need for our login window. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Sure, you can certainly type this out by hand, but in most cases, a better approach is to crank it out using Test Architect's Interface Viewer tool, a method that is easier, faster, and less prone to error, and which is the main focus of the rest of the session. This lesson assumes you followed the activities of previous videos in the Getting Started series, but if that's not the case, no problem. You can follow along with this exercise using any Test Architect project to which you have access. Once again, it's important to create your interface entities and elements before writing your tests, or at least before writing your system level action lines. Once you have your interface mapped, your action lines can identify the target application's user interface objects by the logical names, TA names, that you've chosen. So let's go ahead now and create an interface entity that maps car rental's login window and its controls. In Test Architect, go to the Explorer tree and note that our project already has an empty interface with the same name as the project. We'll use that. Right-click it and select New Interface Entity. This interface entity will represent the login window, so we'll call it Login and give it a description. Click Create and the empty interface entity is opened in the editor. So now, ensure that the car rental application is running and that it's open to the login window and click Interface Viewer in the toolbar. Once the viewer is launched, click the Identify icon on the toolbar. That's the pointing hand. The viewer minimizes itself, and now we can use Test Architect's Identify tool to mosey around our application window, and as we hover over each control, it gets highlighted. Recall from our test plan that we're going to need to work with three controls, the Username and Password text boxes and the Login button. So let's start by clicking the Username text box. Upon clicking, the Interface Viewer comes back into view with the Username control highlighted in the Viewer's UI Explorer panel. The UI Explorer displays all the currently open windows, dialog boxes, and web pages on your machine, and can also display all the controls of a selected window. To the right of the Explorer panel is the Properties panel. Note the two tabs. Native properties are the ones that are inherent to the application and its technology. But when it comes to mapping your interfaces, you probably only want to use native properties for special cases. In general, you should stick with TA properties, which Test Architect derives from the native properties of each object. 
You can learn more about DA and native properties and test architect help. At the moment, the TA properties on display are those belonging to the username control. The checkbox indicates that the viewer suggests that the label property and its value of username be used to identify this control. Now we could select other properties to fully ensure that the control is uniquely identified, but we'll accept the viewer's suggestion. By the way, we talked earlier about Test Architect always using the controls class as part of its identification. That's automatic, which is why you don't see any checkbox for it here. Now double click the username node. Note the green check mark. This indicates that the control has been marked for commitment to the interface entity. Also note the presence of two names on the node. The one in uppercase on the left is the logical name or TA name that will be assigned to the mapping. We can change it if we want, but let's accept this name. Note also that marking the control also had the effect of marking the window for commitment, as indicated by its green check mark, and the window was assigned a TA name of login. That name came from us. It's the name of the active interface entity which we just created a moment ago in Test Architect. Now let's map the next control. Click Identify again, then click the password text box on the login window. In the viewer, double click this node, and again, we're accepting the viewer's suggestions for the property value pair and the TA name to use for the mapping. Finally, repeat this procedure for the login button. This time, let's assign our own choice of TA name to this control, which we do in the TA name field. Now, we could call it login button, but given the fact that application interfaces can change over time, it's good practice not to tie your TA names to particular classes of elements. So let's opt for function over form and label it submit login. And now hit enter. We're now ready to commit the mappings for the login window, login button, password box, and username text box to our interface entity. Before doing that, and no need to follow this step, let's just bring Test Architect into the background so that we can see the immediate effect of our next step. Now in the viewer, click Save. And now we can see that the interface element actions, one for each control, have been written to the file, along with an interface entity setting action that maps the interface entity's name to the car rental's login window. Now an important step, and this is applicable to all Test Architect project items. Right-click anywhere in the editor and select Check-in. Write an optional comment about the file and click OK. The checking in and out of files is part of Test Architect's revision control system. To learn more about Test Architect's revision control, see Test Architect Help. One more piece of business. As you recall, our test confirms a successful login by checking for the presence of Car Rental's welcome window. That requires that we first map that window. So create a new interface entity and name it Welcome. Go to the application and bring up the welcome window by clicking Login. Make sure John is still in the username field. Now return to the viewer, refresh, and there is the welcome window. Now we only need to capture the window itself, not any of its controls, so double click its entry. And now we see it's marked for commitment and go ahead and click Save. Now we can shut down the viewer, return to Test Architect, and check in this file. And the mappings we need for our login test case are complete.